So, choo 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 dum 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 bum 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 bum. It is uh, 9 a.m. here in Los Angeles, and it is uh, Monday, April 15th, A.D. 2024, and uh, we're going to have a fun show, guys. I think. I have some things that I would like to cover, and um, streaming on multiple platforms, including I'm going to connect on IG right now. Shout out, guys. Not that anybody really watches. I mean, some people do uh, on IG. Uh, you know, there was a st- couple of stabbing attacks. Terrible business down in, down under Australia, Sydney suburbs. Suburbs, okay? So this, this is like um, Temple City, California, which is a suburb of Los Angeles, or Arcadia, California. They thought that there was a, I think there was a smash and grab at Arcadia, California, relatively recently, at a mall that I used to go to as a kid. And it was kind of shocking because it's just Asians and, like, well, relatively well-behaved, you know, family Hispanics and whites. Maybe a few blacks here and there, but they're just the nice ones. But a smash and grab, and it's spreading. The homeless problem, it's ridiculous. Two separate issues I brought up there. Um, let me see. How am I, how am I centered? <laughs> uh, what else? The ladies complaining. It's, they're like, the ladies are like conflicted. Shout out to the ladies. We love them if we love anybody. Um, but they're like too modest, too immodest. They're conflicted. It's a mess. It's ridiculous. Oh, no, you're fine. I, I like this split thing. But thank you, Hassan. Um, so they're complaining about Nike, the Nike uniforms for track and, U.S. track and field, I guess for the upcoming Olympics or something. Um, and then on airlines, you know how people are just degenerate on the airlines. I'm going to read some of that stuff. I mentioned it in Hake News on the uh, Jesse Lee Peterson show. And some other things. Fun stuff. I may touch on this uh, wildlife crossing that they're going to be making up in the 101, the California 101 freeway, highway, whatever that thing is, up in Agora Hills. I'm shaking my head, but I, it's kind of fun. Nice. And, and your calls, guys, and your super chats. I did see that some of them come in. Donald J. Trump gave a super chat, a real one couple of them. He bought Hake a couple of coffees. Not milkshakes. Not Chick-fil-A. Because Hake is kind of anti-Chick-fil-A. But coffees. Thank you, Donald J. Trump and Sion and others. But anyway, guys, let's get right on with the show! doing I am fine you know I noticed that when I scream into the mic and I don't back off the mic it's like extra loud compared to the rest of the show what a mess I'm wearing a July just feels white t-shirt I think it was, anchor baby might have designed this not sure don't recall exactly celebrate white history month with Jesse Lee Peterson this was, I believe, last year's White History Month t-shirt. Last year's White History Month t-shirt. And um, those are always the White History Month t-shirts. You know, as July approaches, we start to uh, offer them again. They're always limited edition, so get it while you can. Get it while you can. Uh, 
By the way, I had a nice beach stream. Well, I considered it nice. Uh, like two and a half hour long beach recording spliced together various 15 different recordings spliced together and uh, put it out in a, in a YouTube premiere. I also uploaded it to my Rumble, I think. Although I think it's still unlisted. Um, yesterday afternoon, evening. Nice, huh? Thanks for joining me, some of you guys who were participating in the chat, in the live chat, just for fun, just to show off the beautiful California coast landscape down in San Onofre. San Onofre, I think, is mentioned in one of the Beach Boys songs. Could be wrong. Cool. Uh, phew, wow. Lots of stuff going on in the world. Let me dive right into a little bit of news before I get to calls, and then we'll get back to some less important news. Well, whatever. Who cares? Nobody cares about anything. <laughs> so, but let me tell you about this stabbing attack thing. Multiple stabbing attacks in, uh, in Australia. Shout out to the Aussies and the New Zealanders, the Kiwis, um, and all of you guys in the Anglosphere down under. Are there any flat earthers from Australia? I don't think so. In the darkest of times, sometimes comes sometimes the brightest of lights. That's a quote from Ryan Park. I wonder if Park is an Asian last name, because there's a lot of Asians with Australian accents. A New South Wales minister for, for health commenting on life saving of a baby. I think they may have saved a baby's life after the baby's mother, nine month old, after the baby's mother was killed by a Stabber. They don't mention, well, I don't, I haven't looked into what, what it was, what type of suspect this stabber was. You know, they think they banned guns in beautiful Australia. Australia was founded as a criminal uh, island, right? We sent, we the Anglo, the English sent our criminals down there. <laughs> and then they became a country. And shout out to them. But they got rid of their guns, right? For the most part, oh, I'm shaking my head. But there is a this uh, Australian mall. It was called the bon Bondi. Bondi. Bon I think it's bon Bondi. B O N D I. I was calling it Bondi Junction in a Sydney area mall. Was it Sydney proper? Sydney's su Sydney's suburb of Bondi. Bondi. Six people killed, and they said, oh, the, the guy who was stabbing or hurting with the uh, knife and killing, killed six. That's pretty wild, because you're not as effective at, at illing K with an ife nay. We use a little bit of, since it's an ugly topic, kids listen, tender-hearted people listen, ladies, and also YouTube, it's... I feel like YouTube might censor me if I'm talking about an ugly topic too much. Even more than they already do, you know. Uh, it's harder to, to make people eye day near Bondi Beach, says Old Spec Views. Park is South Korean, says Christ Conquers. Whoa. See, I, I had a feeling, because Park is sort of an... Maybe it's a Korean last name. But, whew. A Chinese student phoned her fiancé just minutes before being attacked per a, per a headline from the South China South Morning Post or whatever that thing is. And then another incident, separate incident, at, um, at Wakely, Wakely, W-A-K-E-L-E-Y. Several were wounded, not finished off. In an Australia church. An Assyrian church. Assyria. Is that related to Syria? An Assyrian church in the Sydney suburb of Wakeley. Christ the Good Shepherd Church. This one was sort of interesting to me. A teen was arrested after this, over this. 
a teen was arrested. A bishop and several others were wounded. Or a 15-year-old boy detained over this stabbing. Shocked people who were watching the bishop deliver his service both inside the building and via live stream offered by the church. I'm shaking my head. Oof. Suspect treated for wounds to his hand. The teen was taken to police by police. Uh, church supporters were uh, angry. See, I censored this picture. I guess that's a teenager, a 15-year-old. If I'm to believe that the teen arrested was is this person portrayed in this purported screenshot image from the live stream. A man stabs Bishop Mar Mari Emmanuel. And was that on a Monday? Do the Assyrian churches meet on Mondays? Because you, you people down under, you're way ahead of us. You're like 19 hours ahead of Hake. Or something like that. It's wild. You guys are already on Tuesday. I think. A lot of you. Basically, Jesus' tribe. Jesus' tribe. Some are from Syria, some are from other countries like Iraq, Iraq, Turkey, etc. A stateless people, says Greenwall. Terrible, huh? Doesn't he look sort of Assyrian? I have no idea what Assyrian is, but uh, whew, that bishop guy. You know what? And they're going after, they were going after this. And so that guy looks like he could be a Muslim. I have no idea. Might not have anything to do with that. And this could be AI. But I doubt it. Uh, the, the stabber in the uh, mall was shot by police, by the way. Fatally shot by police after he killed those people. Whew. But the uh, Australian Broadcasting Corporation featured this church, not positively, in a report about a campaign targeting the LGBTQ plus so-called community. May 2023, Austra Australian TV report showed this bishop, Mar Mari Emmanuel, saying in a sermon that when a man calls himself a woman, he is neither a man nor a woman. You are not a... Well, I have to disavow this. I, I don't feel like I can read this out loud. <laughs> well, he said, you are not a human. You are an it. Whoa. <laughs> now, since you are an it, I will not address you as a human anymore because it is not my choosing. It is your choosing, he, said he. <laughs> Come on, man. You don't have to go along with their delusion. He's kind of going along with their delusion in a, like a reactionary way. But shout out to him anyway. We wish him well. He got hurt by that teen. Teen. Which is often a euphemism for not a normal person. By the way, speaking of the Muslims, and shout out to the Muslims, but the Boston Marathon is today. And any time I think of the Boston Marathon, I think of the Boston Marathon arming bay that shut down that whole city. It didn't shut down the whole city, but the reaction to it, because there were fugitives on the run. The Zarnayev brothers here in Boston, Massachusetts. There's the police outside the church, I guess, after that stabbing. Whew. So all kinds of mess happening all across the Anglosphere. Remember in, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts, when was that? 2014? 20 I forget when it was. But the Tsarnaev brothers warned, Russia warned us. Russia warned our, uh, our uh, FBI or whoever. The Obama administration about the Tsarnaev brothers, and they didn't stop them. They set up these rice cookers, I think, with shrap nails and shrapnel and hurt a bunch of runners in uh, Boston. Terrible. So why, keep your, so watch out for bad guys. Watch out, it may, be, it may behoove you to avoid crowds. Don't follow the crowd into the crowd. Yet another reason not to be 
following crowds. But this is happening even in suburbs now. And little churches and stuff. Kind of inviting, inviting evil to befall the people in many ways, in various ways. Terrible, huh? So, thank you, Hassan. Let me get to a call or two, guys. John in New York is on the line here. John, thank you for calling. What's up? Hello. Hi, Mr. Hake. You remember me? Uh, sort of. <laughs> John from Brooklyn. John from New York. Nice. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to comment kind of um, on the Australian thing in a sense where I'm not surprised of what happens in Australia with this action. Uh-huh. Because, you know, they already have given themselves over to the political uh, agenda over there. I mean, you know, what was Australia even before they became somewhat, they had some kind of power? They were just uh, a nation that um, they, they took criminals here. And if they didn't want, co- like, uh, the other option was to leave them in Australia instead of going to, to jail for lifetime prison. That's what so, I heard. They were a penal mm-hmm. colony. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me what happens here. But what I'm more concerned of what's happening here in New York, because the same kind but of... But hold on. Just, I mean, the honestly, the uh, <laughs> fact that they were criminals doesn't have anything to do with what's happening today, you know? Because what's happening today is what's happening all across the Anglosphere. All the white countries are inviting mm. problems and uh, attacks on us. Us being the people. Yeah, yeah, that's what I see worldwide. Yeah. I mean, you see this, um, it's not just... It's honestly happening everywhere. It's happening in China and Russia. There are terror attacks there. But you know what happened? These these things were happening before it really came over here in America. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. They're ahead of us. You know, I mean, look, the totalitarianism in communist nations was, it, it was just there. And there was no protection against it. Yeah. We are you calling? Are you calling Australia a communist nation? And uh, you know, not not they're not like fully communist, but they already gave themselves over to the totalitarianism that you know was introduced to them. I agree. The week, you know, I, it's just they uh, gave up their guns. They have. Yeah. yeah I mean, the, the, the pandemic, uh, just you know. Uh, oh yeah, the uh, shutdowns. Yeah, you remember that? Yeah. But. Um, what what's concerning over here? Did, did you know? Like you know, what's absurd? I'll tell you what's absurd over here in America, right here in the heart of New York. There was a uh, a knife welling person that um, did in Grand Central Station. You know, these people they were out of town as they came over. You know, they were tourists. They came over. They were just having some kind of lunch and something like this. This guy came over and like uh, you know he just stabbed somebody. I don't know what happened, but mm. what happened that I found out was that um, am, am I allowed to say political names here? Uh, yeah, I think so. If there's, okay. I mean, by political names, you mean somebody who's a politician, like a well, public it's, figure. It's a judge. Her name is Lori Peterson. Okay. What she did was she released this particular person that did this action. I think a nine-year-old girl was stabbed or something like that. She re- she releases him, but she sends a seventy six year old man, Jew, a Jewish man, to Rikers, and still keeps him there. Who's that? Do you know? Uh, this other thing, the seventy six year old man was was prosecuted. I don't know what the whole story was, but I know that it was it was it was not what the, the, the a seventy six year old man. I mean, come on. Yeah. That was uh, you know th- th- this crime was light. Yeah. There was some money issue. I don't know. But the whole, what's more absurd, of a 76-year-old man, what are you sending unto him in Rikers for and <laughs> keeping him there? And you're releasing this, this guy who's a nut job, the stealing, a, a, a stabbing nine-year-olds. Yeah. So, you know, this Lori Peterson is one of the names I want to get out there for your hearers because nobody wants to mention their name except one outlet radio station here that I heard. Oh, uh, okay. I mean, so all the judges, I, I don't, I don't support any, and you're not, and you're not suggesting this, but for the sake of my channel, don't mm-hmm. harass her, don't bother this gal. But yeah, judges in, in general, 
so well, many of them are are but hey dumb there, liberals there, there must be yeah i know there must be going something on why uh this liberalism is you know this is imposed upon us there has to be something deeper within the means why they do this because common sense i mean you know i mean i know you got to go by laws and stuff like mm-hmm. that and they're protected from the civil you know, you, you, the civil liberties you, uh civil liberties laws yeah. that crime Right. I know that, but you have to be able to discern. A yeah. person judicial has to be able to discern matters, no? You should be able to, but uh, that's not how it works. There's a, there's, there are people who, it's like people live in totally different worlds, and their views, their views on things are totally uh, opposite of reality. I say totally, but in, in many ways opposite of reality. They believe in this fake thing of, oh, uh, racism and stuff like that. And there's this mama spirit, have mercy on the criminals, and then punish the people who <laughs> violate, a, who violate a, you know, the mama. political laws, politicized laws. <laughs> mama spirit? I like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Well, look, um, a lot of it is tied in. If you want to get into deeper... Uh, sort of conspiracy views or so-called conspiracy views is that they're allowing this to happen. Yeah. I mean, our officials, um, even even the um, the Democratic um, left wing who is now in power, a lot of Democrats in in these official places are uh, smelling the coffee, so to speak. Waking and, up. Yeah, they are, but they're afraid to blow the whistle because a lot of pressures against them against these people that are in high. Higher places, you know. Yeah. So you know, I mean, look, the evil thing, in the world. It's evil. I mean, you know, yep. what is it? I mean, Jesse Lee Peterson says that there's no isms, but I think there's a one ism that's uh, really uh, uh, in full full view. It's called Marxism and totalitarianism. <laughs> yeah, but those are just those are just uh, names for some of the systems yeah, that fine. come about as a result of evil. And, it's all, uh, lies and well, biblically, you know what? You're right. Because fake goodness. It's all good and evil. Right. Down, you know, wolves in sheep's clothing. And this is what you know. If you don't have your guard up, if you don't have God in you, who lives in you, who's active in you, you're going to feel you're not going to you're not going to be aware. It's just like what Jesus said that he says to be awake, but most of Religious people, I would say, I mean, call them religious people. Most people, even in Christian uh, circles, they're just in a box. They just go from church to work to home, and they shut off any kind of. They tell they're told not to have TVs, don't look at the news. <laughs> yeah, and in a sense, don't get absorbed, don't get consumed by the news. We Which worry, is, but you have good. to know what's going on. Yeah, right. So, but um, I think that you know what? What do you? Th- what is your um? I hate to say it on and use the time, but what do you think about this Omni thing? This what thing? Uh, Omni. O-M-N-I. You heard about this oh. machine that is put up in uh, the transit, and now they want to throw away uh, the cards, you know, the Metro cards, and they want to be able to push people that don't even know how to do this, especially with senior citizens that have half fare. It's very difficult to transfer or to operate. Oh, I have... Of- I hadn't heard about it. I'll have to look into it, man. I appreciate this uh, tip. Yeah, all right. So I just want to just make mention of this, and okay. then you guys can work on that, and then talk and have your you know, viewers uh, you know, just uh, elaborate on it. Okay. Cool. All man. right? Yeah. Good to hear from you, John, in New York, man. Call me again. Okay. All right. Bye. Joe in Phoenix, Arizona, on the line here. Joe, thank you for calling and holding there, man. What's up? Good morning, James. Good morning. All righty. So it was good to hear Big Bump looked into the Obama phone thing, and he mentioned that that one woman went viral, the super ignorant ghetto woman. I mentioned that was... one. He Okay. Yeah, uh, he talked about the FDR uh, thing, law, oh, from way okay. back in the 30s. But you're totally right to mention that woman because she was loud and just incredibly stupid. That's what made and it just, a meme. Yeah, and it went viral, right? Yep. 
I and, got my um, Obama. Fo- is she the same one who said, no, I don't support Romney. He stinks. I don't know. I couldn't watch that video for more than two seconds. I got to I got to bring. That. Oh, anyway, I want to play that video sometime soon. So lifeline, it's, it's, it's lifeline. Exactly what I was. But to to reiterate about. to reiterate what Big Bum said, Lifeline is part of the Universal Service Fund established under the Communications Act of 1934, signed by the socialist himself, FDR, Franklin Delano Delano Roosevelt, the wheelchair bound. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that wasn't a Reagan thing. It was a, according to what Big Bum is saying, it doesn't sound like it was necessarily a Reagan thing as much as an FDR thing that continued and went viral under Obama. <laughs> Thanks to that, that well, black yeah. lady. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about in terms of, of narratives, false narratives, and propaganda. Right. right but this was a woman. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. This, yes. This, 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 this was a woman who was loud, ignorant, ghetto, completely stupid, had no clue about life on system. All she knew was that Obama was president and she got a free phone, so she's going <laughs> to praise Obama, right? Right. I got my com- Obama phone. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I even saw that clip on Fox News at, at, at the time. Right. Because they're and, entertaining. I mean, the, the, black, the black ladies, as much as you may be consternated about it, they're entertaining. They're fun. They're funny. Even, anyway, go ahead. We disagree. That's the problem with the black community, if you ask me. No, no, I, yeah, of course. That's, they're not, it's not the problem, but it, they are, they are possessed by evil and selfishness and shameless. Mm-hmm. That's not good. But they are entertaining and funny. So the, this, this speaks <laughs> to what I was trying to tell Alex when we talked, Alex from California last week when we talked. It's all about what you're seeing on, on the algorithm. So if you want to see that kind of stuff, the algorithm's going to feed you more and more of that. And you're referring this case, time, you're referring to Alex from California's call about the black violent crime and, and robberies and correct. stuff. Correct. You know, so if he watches that on, on his feed, especially on YouTube, YouTube's going to feed him more and more of that. You know, but on, he doesn't... On my feed, on my feed, I see that, um, you know, Goldman Sachs had to pay $2.9 billion recently. J.P. Morgan had to pay $920 million recently. Citigroup, $400 million recently. So that's what I'm seeing. What did they have um, to pay for? Um, let's see. Goldman Sachs pleaded guilty for the first criminal charge in 150 years history. Uh, J.P. Morgan, third criminal case in the last several years, manipulating two different financial markets. And Citigroup has fined... Four hundred million for unsound, unsafe banking practices. You know, I uh, the thing. Far be it from me to take up for banks, right? I'm not taking up Mm -hmm. for banks, but when I hear them getting fined by the federal government, I'm like, "But the federal government's evil too. Who's finding the federal government? Who's holding the federal government responsible?" (laughs) Because they're kind of in bed with each other. One is trying to regulate the other. The other is trying to influence the other and lobby the other. And they're trying to vying for control over one another, and they're kind of in cahoots with one another. And uh, some of the problems with the banks are created by policies made by the politicians and the bureaucrats. Am I wrong? There's some truth to what you're saying there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But the algorithm so, I, I, that Alex from California said that he's. Uh, I don't know where he's whether he's seeing the, these black fights and black attacks and robberies. Well, on, he on YouTube. Okay, but it's happening on. You see it on Twitter. You see it on Instagram. And if you're not, I'm not. I don't look for that stuff, but I see it. Well, the point I'm making, James, is that you know the reason why Fox was showing that ignorant ghetto lady is because they're pushing a narrative. See, uh, watchers, Obama's giving free stuff to these. Ignorant, um, ghetto black people, and Obama's a socialist because of that. And the ignorant ghetto lady is just lazy and stupid, and that's where your tax dollars is going to. And none of that was true. Wait a minute. There's plenty of evidence to suggest that Obama is a socialist. For example? For example, he said there has to be some form of redistribution of wealth. That's, that's a paraphrase of something that he said. 
He used the phrase redistribution of wealth and supported it. Um, Obamacare was a socialist program of, of uh, making, imposing the government control on the people and the, uh, and the health, so-called health insurance companies. Uh, redistribution of wealth. He, he said spread the wealth around, James. And all he was talking about was creating more opportunity he, for more people. That's yeah, all. Yeah, he said redistribution of wealth. And, uh, that's, no, he didn't. Yes, he, he did. He said spread the wealth around, meaning opportunities for all. So I meant he was not trying to redistribute, redistribute wealth. He spread the wealth that. around is redistributing the wealth. And he did say spread the uh, redistribution. Not. And he did say redistribution of wealth. He absolutely did not. He said spread it around, and he was speaking directly to creating more opportunity for all. Let this so be another wealth. example of Joe from Phoenix asserting something that he doesn't know to be true. And uh, says the guy, says the guy who once ag agreed that Obama raised the deficit when he lowered it and didn't know the difference between the deficit and the debt. OK, he did raise the deficit. He increased the deficit. He decreased the deficit by 75 percent, James. The deficit both is of, not the same as the debt. Both of those things can be true. Because if the if the national debt, what? like if the national debt doubled, mm -hmm. If the national debt doubled in the course mm -hmm. of however many years, four years mm -hmm. or eight years, from 10 trillion to 20 trillion, then uh, he definitely increased the deficit some way. Because it wasn't on, Completely it wasn't, wrong. it wasn't, was it on pace to double under, uh, under, uh, what's the his name? The deficit was cut 75%, James. Maybe at one point in his, period. maybe, at, maybe at one point in his career, but not the other. But going back Same. to but going back to the redistribution of wealth thing, mm -hmm. you uh, I specifically heard that line multiple times on the Jesse Lee Peterson show out of his yeah, mouth from Jesse out, out, from Not, out no. of Obama's mouth, Joe from Phoenix. Okay, you will have to debate this way because I, I don't have it in front of me right now. It's but not I up for debate. It's either Reddit, true Reddit, or it's Reddit. false, and you're making the false claim that it's false. You're making a false claim. He said, he said, spread the wealth around, speaking about opportunity, not redistributing wealth. You're wrong. Now you're just making stuff up, and you're holding to it like a stubborn man. <laughs> <laughs> pot, kettle, black bear. I know, but, but, but the pot is still black. Point. No, the kettle still is black, meaning you still are uh, saying something wrong and being stubborn about it. Yeah, believe what, believe what you like, James. It's not believing what I like, it's remembering it. If either I'm misremembering it or you're misremembering it. And so, anyway, what a mess. So this is what I'm talking about in terms of false narratives and propaganda terms. This is why it's important to get things accurate. And that's why... You don't care like about accuracy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> keep, keep, keep trying to bait me. Again. No, fine. you don't. Mm -hmm. You said something false about it. the police acted stupidly. <laughs> You're not a reliable mm -hmm. source, man. You're a yeah, communist. Says the, guy get, says the guy gets things wrong constantly. Okay, sure. You're a communist. I'm sitting there watching the, the jury selection for Trump right now. This is interesting. Yeah, see, that's communism. There's 500 people in the jury pool that they're going to have to choose from. That's really fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Communism. Anyway, my overall point is that <laughs> it's about what you look for. Exactly. Narr narr narratives being pushed. Obama had only one speech take, <laughs> says Cameron, 1422. Indeed. Yeah. Had one, one. And you, only one speech. Obama only had one speech, says Cameron. He's mocking you because you're pretending like he only ever said spread the wealth around and he never said redistribution of wealth. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yes, narrative. That's why you cling to the narrative of less than 1.05% of blacks commit violent crimes uh, or something like that. And so you're like, those are the facts, James. Those are the facts. Yes, yeah, facts it's a stubborn thing. It's a fact. It is. That's one fact. <laughs> I got to run, man. This is we've been rehashing all of these things over and over again unless you have something new. But uh no, that's it. That's it for now. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm glad to see I'm glad to see the big bump is trying to dig deeper finally instead of being so superficial and surface. That's not true. Big Bump is always pretty deep. Yeah, it says the guy who couldn't name one thing that Trump did well. Okay, sure. He's pretty well researched. Okay. Again, it says the guy who couldn't name one thing Trump did well. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, he deregulated. Have a good day, James. All right. He deregulated, though. All right. Bye. Bye. Yeah.
<laughs> yep. See, he admitted. Joe from Phoenix admitted that Trump did deregulate. <laughs> okay. Back to some stories, guys. I wanted to get to these ladies. So this is kind of gross, Nike. These track uniforms have gotten worse and worse and worse. It used to be that the gals didn't even run, didn't even compete in sports. And then they started letting them compete in sports, but they had to wear like full-blown shirts and shorts, right? And then they started making them wear like bathing suits. Actually, the bathing suits used to be like full shorts and shirt almost type of thing. And they've gotten skimpier and skimpier. And the ladies are even calling them skimpy. Terrible. No pictures for this segment, by the way. <laughs> so Nike, Nike, far left extremist Nike out of Oregon, I think. Named after some Greek goddess, I think. Shaking my head. U.S. track and field athletes were criticizing... Nike's Olympic uniform is sexist. Oh, Lord. You can criticize it for being revealing, but not sexist. Nature is S word is sexist. Nature and nature's God, it treats women differently and men differently. And so should we. Duh. And that's what they ask for, too. They ask for special treatment. These ladies. Shout out to the ladies. They're so conflicted. Images were made public last week. Uh, this is from the far left female run outlet, the skim, by the way. First look at the track and field kits, which is to say uniforms. For Team USA, females called them skimpy. And probably their females are right. Ridiculous, I heard. Nike said that they're providing Olympians with multiple uniform options. Not the first time some uniforms have raised red flags in women's sports. And I've seen where, like, beach volleyball gals wore, like, these biker shorts, where they're still, like, tight, short, tight clothing, but it's, like, going halfway down their thigh. And there's, like, Norwegian women or something like that. They got fined or something like that for not wearing uh, bikini bottoms. What the heck? What the heck? Although it did look weird since everybody else is wearing something different. Whatever. What a mess. I guess they kind of want them to be uh, getting eyeballs. They want ratings. And that's going to lower the ratings. Because it makes them look more mannish or something odd. It did look sort of odd. In, in the defense of the people who were finding the Norwegian gals. I do be conflicted, says one gal in the chat. It's pretty S-word, Jewel. Yeah, true. But that's what it's... I disavow it, but that's what the uh, draw is of a lot of these women's sports stuff. It just, it's a fact. I disavow it. <laughs> but uh, in contrast, in contrast, passenger women are getting kicked off of airplanes, the based airline companies. I use the term very, very, very loosely, of course. Like American Airlines, Ankle ba Anchor Baby Airlines, probably, maybe. Not sure. <laughs> Haven't seen the stewardesses of Anchor Baby Airlines on Fridays in Xtreme. Uh, Alaska Airlines, the one with the door plug that fell out. Was that Boeing's fault or was that Alaska Airlines' fault? Who in, who's in charge of maintenance of the plane? Is it, was it a maintenance issue or was it the manufacturing issue? I wonder, maybe both. Because one is supposed to cover for the other. Like on the JLP crew, one is sort of like a backstop to the other. If one person misses something, the other person is supposed to catch it. Nice. Uh, and Delta Airlines, even. Kicking gals, ladies, off the plane because those ladies are not like the modest track women. 
They want to show off and be all comfortable and dress all scantily clad. One sister of a model complained on social media, a woman who was like Miss Universe. After her American Airlines passenger sister, the Miss Universe gal, I think, had to cover up her black sports bra and uh, biking shorts with a hoodie. She had to put on a hoodie (laughs) before boarding an American Airlines uh, flight to Cabo San Lucas a couple years ago, 2022. Another woman, a Houston-based physician woman, Tisha Rowe. I think my last name is maybe supposed to be Rowe. R-O-W-E, which I think means red, right? Or ruddy? But Tisha, I wonder if she's black. I think she is. Because she, w- she publicly criticized the Fort Worth-based uh, carrier, I think that's American, out of Texas, over a July 2019 incident in which she was asked to cover up because she was uh, too revealing in her floral outfit. Had to cover up with a blanket on a flight from Jamaica to Miami. I think she, this is from, these are CNN, this is, I'll paste the CNN article so you guys can read along. No pictures, thankfully. <laughs> I mean, they're just stock photos anyway. Uh, she posted a video to TikTok. Oh, no, 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 that's a different one. Another highly publicized incident on Alaska Airlines, August 2021. Police escorted this passenger woman wearing black shorts and a crop top initially off of a flight upon the landing. The passenger was Ray Lynn Howard, a hairstylist and rapper called Fat Trophy Wife. Anybody, you ever heard of Fat Trophy Wife, Hassan? No siree, Bob. She must be a lame Nah. There are many people who are not lamos whom we've never heard of. She posted on TikTok herself being questioned by authorities after the flight. She was allowed to remain on the flight, by the way. The video got 1.5 million likes, shared more than 10,000 times. And then get this. They got the lawyer, liar, unchristian gals involved. A passenger took her... Outrage a step further, retaining, retaining a high-profile civil rights attorney, feminist lawyer, Gloria Allred, who has had run-ins with JLP, I think. We protested outside of Gloria Allred's office when she was going after Trump in 2016. After an incident on a, up there on Wilshire Boulevard, don't harass her, guys and gals. We did it righteously and tastefully and under the bounds of the law. In uh, January 2024, just this year, on a, the heck, the heck, on a flight from Salt Lake City to San Francisco, Lisa Archibald, Archibald said she was treated like a criminal for not wearing a front under her top. She was escorted off the plane by the gate agent allowed to fly only after she put a shirt over her revealing outfit, quote-unquote revealing. Allred held a news conference just a few days ago, late March, entitled A Woman's Passen- a Woman Passenger's Est- Estbray versus Delta Airlines because she wasn't wearing a the thing. I said it earlier, that word. <laughs> she wasn't wearing a bra. And then she was being kind of showy about it, about not wearing it, like it was too obvious. Sitting alongside this Lisa Archibald woman against a backdrop of bras hanging from a clothing rack, Gloria Allred, media uh, seeker, media seeker. I didn't want to say or, hey, because that n- sounds too bad for me to be saying something like that. Gloria Allred wrote a, <laughs> wrote a letter to Delta Airlines urging the Atlanta-based carrier to change its policy and request meeting with its president. Gloria Allred wants to meet with the president. Money grubbing, attention grubbing, power grubbing, media grubbing. There we go. That's better than, you know, what I, the other thing that I was trying not to say. Delta's current policy, highly subjective. 
applied in a discriminatory manner. Yeah, we're supposed to discriminate based on decency. Disparate treatment and harassment of passengers like Ms. Archibald. A woman word. So sick. Bef get this. Before the Airline Deregulation Act in 1978. This is when it was classy. Airline Deregulation Act 1978. The beginning of the end. Before that, passengers in the United States paid top dollar for airline tickets, and they dressed the part, donning three-piece suits, dresses, and high heels. Nowadays, comfort is king. Shifting cultural norms and trends such as athleisure, athletic clothing but leisure also, combined. Most modern-day economy cabins are populated with passengers wearing jeans, t-shirts, hoodies, flip-flops, sometimes even pajamas, and dressing like Utz Slay. You'll notice not one incident of a man getting kicked off. <laughs> Thank God. But they have the right to refuse service for any reason, or, like, make you... Dress better. Ladies. Always women complaining. What's new? You know what I mean? Shaking my head. Shout out to the ladies. Jaime in California is on the line here. Jaime. <laughs> uh, in Minnesota, I mean, not California. Jaime, thank you for calling and holding there, man. What's up? Hey. How's it going? Going well. You're coming in kind of rough. Are you on a speakerphone down there? Yeah. I, uh, I thought you were going to California, not me. <laughs> I know. Terrible. <laughs> so, uh, hey, have you heard of the, the word uh, black fragility? I think I have, yeah. They, it's kind of a reactionary term because they use white fragility. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I saw... The, uh, that term... Come close I, to your I, phone. Be on regular phone, man. Yeah, I, I was just going to read it to you. Oh. Stay close to it, to your speaker. Uh, but, uh, I remember when they were talking about white fragility. I read that book by that woman. Oh, you did? I did. I read, I did. And, uh, I, uh, when, when I was finished reading it, I was reading a lot of this, uh, CRT stuff, critical race theory. Yeah. that was... I was on a, a education kick, and I wanted to learn more about it. And they almost had me. You know, oh, they really? Almost had me thinking that I was a racist. Because <laughs> you're a white yeah. Hispanic, right? Right. Okay. And uh, I even, you know, talked to a pastor about it and, and things like this. So they had me good. Whoa! I thought yeah, you were reading yeah. it because you were, you wanted to s understand how these dumb liberals think. At that time, no. Okay. I, at that time, I didn't see the difference. I didn't see... This was during... This was after the George, George of Florida mess? Right. And, okay. Uh, I didn't... I didn't understand anything. Okay. Like I do now. Right. I didn't have my own opinion. Yeah. So I was looking for an opinion to grab onto. Okay. So uh, anyway, so I thought I was a, a racist. <laughs> and uh, so I had a spiritual uh, calamity on it and uh wow then then i realized you know after a little while that that wasn't true i wasn't a racist yeah this is just somebody's opinion yeah about other people true and it wasn't true yeah well wow, uh, so the pastor helped straighten you out or 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 uh just your own realization well i just talked the reason i mentioned the pastor is because uh it got it, it was invading my mind so hard. Oh. Know? And, and so, was this pastor a liberal or a conservative in terms of uh, this issue? Uh, he, he said, well, I was talking about the town that we are in and, you know, talking about everybody's a racist. And, yeah. You know, and he was like, well, right here we're not. I mean, we got a lot of people here that are uh, Somali and it's not racist here. Yeah. And uh, so... I guess I didn't understand completely, and I just grasped onto the the idea that this one book had. Okay. So yeah, some of that stuff is dangerous, you know. How so? If you, well, like for me, I I would have, you know, eventually changed my hair color and 
<laughs> Are you serious? Are you ever... Probably, I don't know. And you're a grown <laughs> man. You're in your like twenties, twenties, thirties at least, right? Yeah, that was my early thirties. Okay. So, yeah. Wow. This was like five, five something years ago. And you were first... you were college educated, but not community college. Okay. I never got into this weird, crazy stuff. Right. Hmm. But uh, you know, they they tell you in high school. I remember in in school. They'd say, you know, education is very important. And I always wanted, I, I had the idea that becoming educated and learning about the Greeks and the Romans and about the Civil War and about all that other stuff was the most important thing, and that's how you succeed in life. Oh, okay. And uh, that stuff doesn't work. Yeah. You don't need to know any of that baloney. Yeah, I mean... It's it's fun. And it's good. It's kind of informative sometimes to know history, but it's it's more important to know how to work, right? And right, live. Right. Yep. So they got me with the white fragility, and then I saw the term black fragility, and that seems pretty uh, spot on too. It's like a defensiveness when somebody mistreats you, or and it can be in your head or not in your head, or yeah, something that seems like they're mistreating you, right? But uh. I watch a lot of uh, cop cam videos. Okay. And uh, there's some blacks in there. Um, of course. Uh, a lot of white women. Yeah. Uh, DV, domestic violence oh. type situations where the, the white women are attacking the boyfriends or the, it's usually a boyfriend. Oh, so the, the white woman is physically attacking the uh, boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. Is, the, is, the, is quite and, common in these police cam. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. There was one uh, I was watching over the weekend where this woman had divorced her husband, and she had the kid, and the kid called the cops and told them that he had found drugs, a big old bag of methamphetamines. And uh, it the ended kid, up being, the kid found that. Yeah, uh, under the mom's dresser, they were looking for. She had him looking for a watch or something. Yeah. And so he, he said, yeah, he happened upon it and called his dad. Then the dad told him to call the cops, and they took her in. Interesting, man. Yeah, so the, the women, now the white women are a big problem. But the, yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah. Th- that's, so, that's a mess. It's a spreading they, issue. They may come up with a term called female fragility. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's just hey, uh, I I think it's just fragility, fragile egos, selfish, evil people. You know, because it's like absolutely. it's something that's common to human nature, and a lot of blacks and women are encouraged in this victimhood stuff. So, it would follow that they would fall into it more frequently per capita. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And uh, judging by those those cop cam videos, because you get to see like how everybody's reacting and overreacting, and yeah, it, it seems like uh, the men, the white men, are very uh, uh, weak. They can't. They yeah. can't really. The, the something about them is weak. Yep, I know what and, you mean. Uh, it's the 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 black men and women and the white women. Who are aggressive yeah is it like strong like you know aggressive right not the not a, a strong and a and a pushy evil personality way it reminds right. me of in church with jlp a few months a couple months ago this young lady said commenting on how weak all of her boyfriends have been she thought oh i i guess i i thought i always just had a strong personality but she was judging her father because her father's weak and she tries to protect her father from her mother. And uh, she just dominates her boyfriends. And JLP said, no, you had an evil personality. It wasn't actually strong. But, uh, but yeah, aggressive. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> and uh, I, I was uh, uh, looking at land over there in California. Yep. So it, not for me, but I'm saying, you know, you you go out there, buy about 50 acres of land for 100 G's, and you can start building a, a little uh, shack up there. That's way out in the boonies, huh? Like in the desert, huh? Well, 
Well, it's not too far from where uh, the, the Bond network is. About 50 miles or 100 miles? Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. 50 something. Yep. You go, you go out there, you get 50 acres for 100 grand. That's pretty cool. Is That's it, a great deal. <laughs> it is a nice deal. It's quite a commute, but you can, uh, but you don't have no, to you, live there. No, you, you don't have to live there. Visit on the weekends. You, well, you're going <laughs> to have to build it up on the weekends right. for a bug out, you know, when things get really rough in the city. True. <laughs> you can escape. Yeah. You know, and then who's going to go over there? Who's going to? We're yeah. Gonna go over there. What what commie liberal is gonna want to work hard to find you? That's a good question. Huh? Yeah. You just get a bunch of pallets, free pallets, and push them together, and to block the wind from you, and you might last a while. <laughs> nice. You just have to outlast the uh, the last person in the city. True. Have some supplies buried under the uh, bury my food supply, my earthquake supplies. We had earthquake supplies, and the apple juice after the end of the school year it was tasted kind of sour. <laughs> that we brought to the uh, school. That's that's yeah. that's fun, man. That's a fun suggestion. Look, it's it's crossed my mind to do something like that. Other people have suggested the same. Uh, well, hey, thing you got to remember is uh, that's hard living. Yeah, that's hard living. <laughs> right. It's not fun. It yeah. Sucks. Yep. Terrible. So that's why people live in cities because it's all you know. It's nice and easy. It's Nothing easy. It's cushy, that. convenient. But yeah. there ain't nobody over there that's gonna tell you your your shack ain't up to code either. Yeah. Right. They're not gonna tell you to put on a mask. Mask, please. Right. Mask up. So the things with freedoms, freedoms. Uh, it's hard to live with a lot of freedoms. Yeah, true. In the cities, you don't have as many freedoms, but it's easy living. Yeah. So I, I guess I can see why yeah, the liberals and all that, they like it in the cities. Yep. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've thought about that, too, where, you know, the, the LGBTs tend to gravitate toward there and because they can kind of congregate there, and it's cushy, like... It's cushy, they're spoiled, they, they make enough money that they can afford it, most of them. And, uh, and then those who don't, they get subsidized to live there, too. That's right. Terrible, man. Interesting. So if, you want, if you want a lot of freedoms and, you know, you're sick and tired of the, the LGBT stuff, well, all you got to do is go live out in the desert. <laughs> yeah. How's that sound? That sounds like a uh, hard life, like you just said. It sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we're all in a between a rock and a hard place. Indeed. But but right. hard is not necessarily bad. Sometimes there may be a time for hard living. Right. Okay. <laughs> Good to hear from you, man. I appreciate you, Jaime in Minnesota. Take care. Have a good one. You too. Guys, we're uh, already at the top of the hour here. I will get back to calls. It is... LN Monday, Love Neptune Monday, uh, <laughs> LN, not Love Neptune, I disavow that. This track is entitled Stars Did Shine, it's from the 2001 album novel. It's kind of shoegaze. Hope you enjoy it, you musical Philistines. I'll be right back for hour two, your calls, your super chats, and hopefully some more great stories as well. Uh, LN, enjoy. Yeah. 
Murray. D A R Y. M U R R A Y. He is L N. Velvet Blue Music. I like it. So far, so so. Hague's music has a touch of the tism. I don't know what it's about, but I kind of like the vibe. It's what octopus music sounds like. What did he say? <laughs> Thank you guys for bearing with me. Those of you who did bear with me through that marginally nice music, you know? I like it. Shout out to uh, Gary Murray. I was a big fan of LN. I would listen to that loud in the big echoey room called The Wedge in the warehouse art room painting until like 2 or 3 in the morning when I was in college at Azusa Pacific University <laughs> as a little Christian guy. Shout out to LN. I went from uh, 90 Pound Wuss to LN. Sweet. And Tora Tora Torrance. <laughs> um, let me read a few super chats before I get to calls. You can call in 888-775-3773. And you can super chat. Buymeacoffee.com slash The Hake Report is the one that I read the most. I mean, I read them all, but that's one the one that you guys gravitate toward. Whatever. Real Donald Trump bought a couple of coffees Friday toward the end of the Hake report, saying, I was shocked to learn all Chinese massage parlors are brothels. Your thoughts on this? They're everywhere in the U.S., dozens in all states. Have the feds, how have the feds or police not stopped this mess? I don't know if all Chinese massage parlors are brothels, but, um, and there are others like Thai, Massage places and stuff like that. But there was this Christian kid who, young man, I guess, who was S-word addicted and he felt guilty about it. And so he thought it would make sense for him to oot Shay a couple of those massage places up in Atlanta area, was it? Or Florida somewhere? Remember that? Year or two ago? Uh, Terrible. I knew that there were, like, these bridal shops, and we had, a, like, a suspicion, or we would jokingly spread a rumor or hear a rumor that these bridal shops in Temple City and Arcadia, California, you know, where the Asians were taken over, that those were brothels. Brothel is a prostitute place, right? Something like that. Um, not good, real Donald Trump. I, I don't know. That's the type of crime that some of those Asians do, allegedly. I don't know. Apparently, there's some truth to it. I don't know about all of them. <laughs> but, yeah, they, I'm like, how do these things stay open? They're like a front. It's like a front, a money laundering front or something for crime. White collar crime. Those, shout out to the Asians. But thank you. C on C bought a coffee saying, it's amazing to see people want comfort in their lives on earth. All the corrupt politicians, when they die, they can't take it with them. They will be judged and they will be judged by God. Wow. Nice, war fair warning, C on C. That's cool. Big coffee from, uh, from Popcorn's Thump Keg. April 15th headline. Two visitors captured on video destroying ancient rock formations at Lake Mead. Two visitors at Lake Mead National... Lake Mead is Nevada, Arizona. It's not Nevada. It's Nevada. Nevada, Arizona area, okay? The um, Colorado River runs into or out of Ma Lake Mead. I don't know my stuff, okay? And it's gotten lower, by the way. 
and it's revealed body, dead bodies that were left in Lake Mead. Whew. There's nice fish in there. My f- buddies have gone over there. Two visitors at Lake Mead National Recreation Area captured on video destroying ancient rock formations and park rangers seeking the public's health identifying the suspects. Video shows two visitors who scaled towering russet-colored rock formations along the park's Redstone Dune Trail, shoving wide slabs of sandstone to the ground. A young girl screams as the stone topples and crumbles to dust. Damage, damage to the federally protected rock formations shaped over time out of 140 million year old sand dunes, according to them, according to whoever, is irreversible. Recreation area spokesman, they call it spokesperson because they're liberals, the media, uh, John Haynes called the destruction appalling. Terrible. Why on earth would you do this to the area that's so beautiful? It's one of my favorite places in the park, and they're just up there destroying it. They're up there just destroying it. I don't understand that, Haynes told CNN affiliate KVVU. What a mess. Thank you for the news tip, Popcorn's Thump Keg. It seems that people have a lack of respect, in general, to everything. It's terrible. People don't clean their rooms. Somebody said that even Jordan Peterson doesn't clean his room. <laughs> uh, and they turn stuff into ghettos, and the people let other people turn stuff into ghettos, and, and they make beautiful things messy. They put, they tag stuff up. It's terrible. <laughs> Thank you for the headline, uh, and no commentary provided with this. Presented without comment. Thank you, Popcorn's Thump Keg, as always, for your coffee. And uh, wonder if they were white or black or young or old, probably relatively young, uh, or Hispanic or Asian. Asians wouldn't do that. They're too busy making brothels. <laughs> nah. What a mess. What a mess. Based America first with the coffee. CNN reports March calculated annual inflation hotter than expected. Hot inflation, meaning 3.8% instead of 3.7%. In contrast, the Wall Street Journal Market Watch reports real inflation peaked at 18% in 2022, has remained 8% ever since. Crooked Joe's economic advisors have instructed him to derisively label Trump policies as. Maganomics, make America great again, nomics, <laughs> because Trump would impose tariffs and lower taxes on the quote unquote wealthy, thereby making inflation worse in his logic, which is not logic. Messaging says Bidenomics is better because it will undo tax giveaways to rich special interests, increasing taxes on quote unquote wealthy producers, passes tax on to consumers. It does indeed. Raising costs, just like minimum wage does, by the way. You're only increasing the cost of living when you're subsidizing people with this quote-unquote living wage. Ridiculous. Uh, I interrupted his super chat. Joe Obama's signature legislation, the Inflation Reduction Act, has a skyrocketing price tag for climate provisions, which uh, that may cost $1.2 trillion dollars three times more than estimated, and could end up increasing inflation. Counter to tariffs are bad narrative, Biden is expected to extend most of Trump's tariffs, huh? but possibly take some products off the list to lower prices. His strategy is to rely on cheap Chinese imports to lower perceived inflation and put more American workers out of business. What a mess. Thank you for the tip. And explanations there based America first with your coffee. Let me double check over on uh, Streamlabs where Gregatron and Lin Yen Chin like to tag team and put the smack down on Hake intellectually, dominate, and uh, DDT <laughs> Hake with their in- intellectual superiority. Thank you, Gregatron and Lin Yen Chin. 
check in Cash App. Let me uh, check in Kofi, Coffee, Supers. Um, and other platforms. Shout out to GMD Gym, Gift and Subscriptions, Beta Legs with your Given the Lemons, Kilo Alpha Tango, as always, with your ice cream. And double checking over on, uh, <laughs> on, uh, Odyssey, what's up? Out of order, nice to see you. And, uh, Rumble, with your Rumble rants, thank you guys, as always, for joining me. David in Ocala, Florida, is on the line here. David, how are you doing, man? What's up? Hey, hey, thanks for taking my call. Of course. Uh, yeah, before I get into this, man, I just wanted you to know, I I saw, I hadn't seen a person, of one of my friends for 20 years the other day. Okay. People made, people make these comments in the chat, and he goes, after he saw me after 20 years, he goes, man, you still look the same. He goes, you haven't aged a bit. You're like Benjamin Buttons. <laughs> uh, man, because you look and sound young, huh? Well, yeah. He, well, he, he, he just... I worked with him 20 years ago, and uh, he was just surprised how young I still look for my age. That's all. But people that wrote in the chat that I was Benjamin Button. Uh, uh, yeah, true. Somebody yeah, so. somebody tipped tagged me on. Uh, I think it might have been Esoteric. Tagged me on X, posting a video of this guy who's trying to do the Bruce Lee Jeet Kune Do stuff. Mm -hmm. He's like an mm -hmm. age, an aging, but skinny fit white man with sort of a high higher pitched voice you know like a young sounding voice and he said right. this is how i picture david and ocala looks <laughs> oh uh, really yeah that's funny where was that at that was on where x you... twitter oh, on tw oh okay i'll retweet it if i can dig it up and find it because it was yeah, kind of amusing cool. <laughs> I, I heard an interview, and now I get onto this. I heard uh, Sean was saying he was, uh, I think, Irish and German. Oh, and, uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's I what so. I am. I'm Irish German, and I got Cherokee Indian in me. And now, it, and I, that's when when I figured that out, I realized why I had a temper, you know, because those three, you know, all three of them have temper issues. So anyway, hey, I called because I wanted to ask you a question. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You just you just made a a statement that uh, I want to dwell on us for a second. Okay, okay, go ahead. Repeat what you just said. I said I'm Irish, German, and Cherokee Indian. Okay, and I and I realized why I got te a temper problems because all three of them got temper issues. You know, <laughs> that's funny, man. Uh, shout out to the Irish, the Germans, and. There's never a reason to be angry, but you guys have reasons. <laughs> right. Uh, um, and to the Cherokee. The Cherokee. Do the Cherokee... I guess I disavow that anybody has any, uh, any reason to be angry. If I, get, if I have to poo-poo the notion that, that uh, Cherokee has reason to be angry, then I guess I should poo-poo the notion that Irish or Germans have a reason to be angry. Nobody has any reason to be angry. I like JLP's message on that. No, no, you're right. Hey, listen, so I wanted to yeah. ask you, I heard y'all made a comment, and I was a little confused, and I was wondering, do y'all not believe that um, the Holy Spirit is God? No, he's the Spirit of God, but hes I don't think he's God. Okay. At least that's, uh, JLP definitely says he's not. I, cause he's, right. It's like right. uh you know that there's two different statements about the breath of life. Okay. The breath of life, the animals have it, animals who breathe, and human beings have it. That's like a normal physical breath of life. And then there's also like the breath of life in man. And I I think of that as like the Holy Spirit gives good in the Bible says that the Holy Spirit gives good sense to uh, the godly. Mm -hmm. And I think that the Holy Spirit is with people, but the people are not listening to that spirit. They're listening to the evil spirit. So how, uh, how, did, how did the Holy Spirit uh, be, uh, uh, 
come to be? I mean, do you believe he was created or something or what? You know, I don't know. I don't. Okay. I don't really. I don't really well, think well, the about main that. question I, I want to ask you that, but the main question I want to ask you is y'all talk about people being born again. Yeah. Explain to me what how, what your thought process is on that. On being born again? Yes. How are you born again? How is a person born again? Uh, when they uh, when they're when they change what spirit they're led by, I think they're born again that way. Because after Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born again, right? He uh, he says the spirit. Nobody knows where the spirit is coming from. It's like the wind. Nobody knows where it comes from or where it's going. Right. It's free. Like it's it's um. Whereas the uh, devil people, Satan-led people, which is all of us, are sadly predictable. You know what I mean? They're, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if Jesus was saying that, but I think about that and how the, we're all on the wide road to destruction, not, not following the narrow path led by the Spirit of God. So you switch your your allegiance is switched and you're born of God. And so then you, do you, and then you that... no longer sin. You cannot sin because God's spirit is in you. And stuff like that. It says if you, if you say you have no sin, you're a liar. It yeah, also it says in fun. that same book, no one who was born of God sins. He cannot sin because the spirit of God is in him. Well, that's because God doesn't look at his sin anymore. It's not that the person becomes uh, perfect. I mean, there's no way that a person with the flesh that you can become perfect. So you don't believe that you have to, like, ask God into your life and uh, and, and ask him uh, to redeem you from sin and to, uh, you know, change your life and give you eternal life. You don't believe that you have to ask God for that? Uh First, you said that you can't be perfect. That's not in the Bible. Sure, it says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's not saying that you you can't be perfect. It doesn't say that you can't be perfect. Yeah, you can't never be perfect. Where does it say that in the Bible? Because we're sinners, buddy. Where are you getting this from? You getting this from Jesse? I'm not trying to break your chops or nothing, but I mean, are you where are you getting it? Where are you getting it from? Because the Bible says be perfect. Jesus says, "Be perfect." Yeah, but he knew you couldn't be perfect. If why he would he say you that you perfect? He, why would he say be perfect if he knew you couldn't be? <clears throat> well, he told him to go and sin no more too, but he knew you right. were going to sin. Right, uh, right. Why are you I mean, Why can, are you putting words in Jesus's mouth? I'm not putting words. Yeah, in you his are mouth. because you're saying that he said where stuff. Where you are coming from? That's all. I'm coming from where the Bible says because the Bible clearly says no one who is born of God sins, and so Jesus said, sin. "Go and sin no more." I and, know it did. And, and no, nowhere does it say, but he knew you were going to keep, keep sinning. What the heck? Where are you getting no, at? He said he came, he came with, he's, he's merciful. Okay, but let me, so let me ask him. When you go out, when you're out and about. So, you, you're, so out, you're leaving I'm, that question unanswered? Well, I'll just say this. I believe that, people, you know, well, okay, so if you could just not sin and you could just ask God, you know, for, uh, uh, for forgive, forgiveness, why did Jesus have to come and die on the cross then and shed his blood to uh, atone our sin? He could have just said, hey, be a good guy, turn around, act nice, be, you know, do, treat your neighbor as yourself, and you're, you, well, I'll, let you in, I'll let you in. See what I'm saying? There, he, he was, I don't he see what you're saying. He sacrificed his life for, <laughs> you're for not, the world. So you're leaving that question unanswered about, about you're just assuming that you keep on sinning? And you can't be perfect. Of course you can't, man. I mean, when I but where does the Bible say this? When the Bible says the opposite of what you're saying. Next time, I'll just I'll call you back when I I'll look up some verses. Okay. I just think that yeah, because the Bible actually says be perfect. Okay. Yeah, so you're contradicting the Bible, not me. Well, let me ask you something. Do All you right. feel that your spirit's born again? Do you feel like, did you have an encounter with God to where you feel like, you know, the Holy Spirit came in and dwelled in you? That He lives in you? Do you believe that the Holy Spirit lives in you? Uh, in... We're getting deep, aren't we? 
What do you mean? <laughs> no, it's just pretty deep question for everybody. You know? Yeah, it's a it's a fair question. Because the Word of God says you got to be baptized. You got to be baptized and born again, or you can't enter into the kingdom of God. That's but, why John taught, baptized people and for the remission of sin. And uh, you know, it says if you're baptized in the name of the Father and the Go baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for the remission of sin. You know? Did you ever get baptized before? When I was a baby. When you were a baby? Yeah, I think I was baptized as a baby. You're talking about the physical baptism where they put the water on your head? Well, no, I meant like you getting dunked in the river or the or a, or a, or a, in a church or something like that. No, That's I don't think all. I ever did that. Well, I would... You think ask- you're supposed to do that? Yeah, well, it doesn't mean, okay, so the thief on the cross didn't get baptized, and he, he went into paradise that day. According so to Jesus, yeah, you'll be with yeah, me in paradise. Right, so he didn't get it, so it doesn't mean that you can't get salvation if you don't get baptized. Okay. It's just a thing out of obedience to God, that's all, and it'll change your life. It'll change your life just by asking, just like asking God to forgive you of your sins and I don't know where it's, it, I don't think that it says ask God to forgive your sins in the Bible. I know, that's another, yeah, you, we talked about that the last time. It doesn't say it, right? Yeah. Right. So what do you th- how do you think these people are going to obtain salvation and be redeemed, uh, uh, James? Who, what people? I mean, God, the world. How do you think the people are going to find of them, God? And, most, huh? of them, most of us will not. I know. Yeah. Sad, isn't it? That's what I'm uh, I, yeah, I used to be kind of sad about it. <laughs> I don't well, know. Uh, I don't know. You just worry about yourself. I, I understand that. I, I, I'll leave you with this. Jesus man. even you know, told Peter to worry about himself. Because Peter's like, what about him? Asking about uh, John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, who was walking behind them. And Jesus mm-hmm. said, if he's going to live forever, what business is that of yours? I got gotcha. you. Because I, know, I think I know Jesus you're... told him, you, you used to go wherever you wanted and do whatever you wanted, but there will be a time when you're led where you don't want to go and blah, blah, blah. And that, yeah, may have referenced, is... they, that may have referenced the way he was going to die. He was going to be led to be executed. Pa- Peter. Or the way he was living his life. He was hanging out with hookers and freaking drinking all the time. Wait, you're stuff, saying, you know you're saying, saying, wait, don't slander Peter. <laughs> Peter might not have been doing something like that. Wasn't he married? I didn't say he was. I said he might, okay? Well, I don't yeah. even bring that up. <laughs> because you can go wherever you want, and, and it's not necessarily some openly degenerate thing, but it's still living a selfish life. All right, so here, so one last thing. So you don't believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are God, all three are God. No, that's the, there's Y'all the Father, there's the, the Son, and the Holy God. Spirit. The Father is God. It only ever calls the Father God, I think. What about when Jesus said, uh, uh, when Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. No one can come to the Father but by me. Because he's, <laughs> he spoke nothing but from the Father, and he did nothing but from what the Father told him. He was the image of the Father on earth. He had God in him. Okay. All right, man. Isn't that a satisfactory answer? Eh, You don't want to admit it. (laughs) What what, what they called him, Emmanuel, God is with us. Right, because God was in him with the people. Well, I tell you what, hey, when we get to heaven one day, we're going to find out, aren't we? Nice. That's, That's nice. So you think I'm going to heaven? believe in this stuff well yeah if you if you ask if you ask if you believe that jesus died on the cross to save you of your sin Uh and that's the only way you can be redeemed is by the blood of the lamb (laughs) and you and you turn from your wicked ways like everybody tries you know means to do yeah uh, yeah he'll honor that and he's gonna he's gonna let you uh i'm 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 with you man because the uh there are people who think that you have to believe that Jesus is God, otherwise you're rejecting Jesus. When in reality, it seems to me that they're rejecting Jesus because Jesus ha- had a God, has a God. Um, well, and well, he and he of- did say, "Oh, have you was is it not written that ye are gods?" I have said, "Ye are gods." Didn't Jesus say that? 
Yeah, it was little G, though. Yeah. Little G. Right. Yeah, yeah. Isn't, yeah, that, that's where isn't faith, that an interesting line? Well, that's where those faith ministers get all crazy, where they start thinking they're little gods. No, but what's the, what's the real interpretation of that, or what's the real understanding of that when he said that? Ye are gods. That I don't know. Me neither. If I don't know something, I won't, you know. Right. Like I, like, I, I like, like that. I agree with you. You should leave it blank if you don't know. Right, right, because I don't want to—it's like, here, it says, No one knows the Father but the Son, and no one knows the Son but the Father, and the one whom the Son wills to reveal himself. And you think about that, okay? Yeah. And I'm telling you, so right, that, you know— So that's God choosing you. That's God revealing himself to you. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So, False um, gods suggest Hassan. See, I believe, I believe Could one be. of the reasons— People I like— believe that, Act like they're gods unto themselves. Go ahead. Right. I believe that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, are God, or Holy Spirit, are God. Uh huh. One and and I know this is going to be a stretch here, but I believe that that's why the angels always say, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty." Okay, you got what I'm saying? Yeah. Because they're saying, "Holy for the Father, holy for the uh, Son, and holy for the Holy Spirit." Okay, so. But, you know, see, like you said, God, G, the Spirit of God has to reveal, G, he, he's the one who reveals Jesus to people, okay? I mean, he moves on people, he tries to draw them into repentance, and if they, for, if they push him away, then, you know, he, he, he'll maybe come back again at them, and eventually he stops, okay? And uh, hmm. then the people are in trouble. And that's, and anyway, listen, man, I, I, I don't want to, go past time and no I don't problem man it beat this up i appreciate you letting me call you and talk to you about this yeah thing, it's fun I was very concerned you know about the uh, about how y'all believe and i just think that y'all should seek god more seek the word of god and god and and i know y'all listen to jesse a lot but let me ask this one question before i go have you ever heard jesse say he was wrong about something of course okay cool what's your okay. beef with jlp what the heck in short, I don't have no beef. With of course him, really. you do. I you just, just implied that that it's dangerous that we're listening to Jesse a lot. It sounded like you're implying no, I that. Said you should seek God. Have you ever seek called JLP? God. I'll call him if you want. You if never you want called to, him. I'll call him and talk to him. No, I've never talked. You got to call in on Bible Thumper Thursday. I'm shocked that you've called Hake but not JLP. Well, the serpent. Was, was I tried the to serpent. Call him. The serpent okay, trying on. to target the weaker vessel. <laughs> no. Go ahead. Listen, Go ahead. I tried to call. I tried to call him one day. Yeah. And, and uh, I guess Sean picked up or something, and I and it, I didn't realize that his show was over. And oh, okay. Put me on with you. And oh. I just feel comfortable. I just feel comfortable talking to you. But if y'all if y'all want me to call him and debate him about some stuff, I surely will. It's not to debate. It's to bring your question, your comment, your disagreement. I mean, you can call it a debate, but. Uh, <laughs> That's funny, man. You're comfortable with Hake. Uh, uh, Sean says, call in on Bible Thumper Thursday. I think that's a good suggestion. All right. I'll, sure, I'll surely do that, man. Y'all have a great day, and, All right. and uh, I appreciate you, Hake, okay? Right on, man. All Take right. Care. Bye-bye. Bye. Aman in India is on the line. Aman, how are you doing? Hey, Hake. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> you just said the serpent... Is targeting the weak. <laughs> that is true, isn't it? <laughs> he's yeah, more comfortable with me. That's yeah. Beta. <laughs> he's like yeah. He's like sneaking around. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I had a question. Um, I asked you before this too. Like, um, do you remember? Like, I asked the endure, 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 and the prize is yours in the end. Yes, and what is the prize? Yeah. Uh, did you think about it? Or you know did you what? ask anybody else? You know what? I forgot about it after you asked me, and I'm like, oh, that's a thing I'll have to think about. And I didn't think about it. Because I was... Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but have you thought about it further? You have any... Uh, you want to share anything about it? Mm, I particularly remember not reading, but hearing from somebody, uh, I think it was, I don't know, some, it's like written in the Bible saying like, if you go through it, you'll be called great in heaven or something like that. 
I've heard stuff like that. Something yeah, like that. I've read stuff like yeah. that. But that's the only thing I have heard or read somewhere, but I don't know what Jesse totally means by it. What Jesse totally means by it? Or what the Bible totally means yeah, by like it? Or Jesse, Jesus? In, like Jesse says all the time, like endure, endure, and prize is yours. But I don't know what that prize is. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't either. You, you Have you called into <laughs> JLP with this question? I, I just, I was about to, but I forgot. You know, uh, I know that there is one reference to the prize, I think, you, uh, what to say? about run in such a way as to win the prize. And a song goes like this, but I think the song is referencing a biblical passage, heavenward in Christ Jesus, something like that. Uh, the, win the prize for which God has called me, heavenward in Christ Jesus. I think that's something that either Paul or the whoever wrote Hebrews or something uh, uh -huh. said in that, wrote in that. But uh, what is the song there, called? There, say again. What is the song called? The the phone called. Song song the, the oh. one that you just said. Uh, run in such a way. Ah, okay. I don't even know the name of the song, but it was a, I was a kid uh, in, like, Sunday school or Wednesday night stuff. Run in such a way as to win, win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Um, ah. It's okay, but yeah. it's cool that you remember some lines yeah. because that's important. Yeah, but still, like, I can like call again later and ask you if you can remember at that time. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I had today. All right, man. It's good to hear from you, uh, Aman, in India. Call me again sometime. Yeah, you too, Jay. All right, bye. Floor, floor. In Guatemala. Guatemala. How are you doing, Floor? Hi, I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing fine. It's nice to hear yeah. from you. First time yeah. caller? Yeah, I'm so nervous. I have never called into a show besides my husband, but I needed to ask you a question. Okay. Oh, no. So you just said about Are you out on the are you out on the highway? I'm out in a lake walk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's probably why it sounds so windy. Yep. <laughs> sorry, sorry, but I have some clarification. I need some clarification. So, you were saying about that not all of us will be safe, even if we ask for our sins won't be able to be forgiven. Like, that the Bible doesn't say that, right? Like we don't supposed to ask Jesus for. It doesn't. It. I don't think that it says we ask for forgiveness. I think because He's already forgiven us. Uh, I think it's a matter of accepting it or believing it, and and mm -hmm. when you believe it, then you really live it, and uh, it's something more like that than asking. Because a lot of people ask and think they're praying to God and or imagine that they're they say God something something save me or whatever but that's that's just fear talk you know that's their fear talking they're giving voice to their fears and worries which isn't necessarily okay. of God okay that makes more sense I was like what is this guy talking about <laughs> this is what it's the cross and did all that and so you're right though like the Bible never says Pray to God for forgiveness. I don't recall reading that at all. I mean, I, I know that there's one incident where Jesus gave, talked about a maybe a theoretical scenario in which this Pharisee was preaching on this or was praying out in front of everybody or standing in the temple and like, oh, I'm glad I'm not like this tax collector or whatever. And the tax collector is <laughs> like, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And I remember uh, when I was trying really hard to be a Christian, I would I would pray that I would say that prayer uh, in in my head or uh, or sometimes like out loud. Have God have mercy on me, a sinner. And 
uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think that. I don't know. No, I think that you're you're completely right. Like your phone is awful. Have... <laughs> cover what your was that? cover. Your phone is awful. Cover your cover the phone with your hand so that we don't okay. hear all that racket. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the North Wing. It's the North Wing. That's what it's called. Okay. Um. No, but I think that you're completely right. I think that we have. Not we, because I don't anymore, but I'm sure I was at some point believing that you're supposed to be begging God for forgiveness and it just makes you feel guilty and yeah. and horrible instead of just accepting the fact that, yes, you're a sinner and that God, has, that God will have mercy on you. But you also said about not all of us will be saved and that you were bummed about it. As, at, least, at least that's what I understood. Uh-huh. Because, what do you mean by that? Because most people, it says most people are 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 only are most people are going to hell or are in hell already. You know, it says only a few will enter the kingdom of heaven in the in the Bible. It says that. But the Bible also gives, um, like, also tells you basically what to do for you not to go to hell, right? Yeah, I think. Yes. But it's not <laughs> So but it, uh -huh. people don't people don't do it. People don't endure. I think it says in the Bible he who endures to the end will be saved, something like that. And people don't endure. Mm -hmm. People fall mm -hmm. away. Like Jesus even told this parable about the seed scattered on different types of soil, good soil, rocky soil, mm -hmm. shallow soil, uh thorny soil and the worries of life was one type of soil that people got caught up with the worries of life and so they didn't stay with it other people were all right. excited about it and then they quickly withered away because they had no foundation no roots so uh he said that that's what the kingdom of heaven is like is that mm -hmm. that it's like the seed that's scattered al along all these different people and only a few of them really accept it, truly accept it. Right, right. And to you, like, what, what does it look like to truly accept, accept it? Uh, people living and being like Jesus. <laughs> I'm laughing. It's terrible that, that sounded I'm like such a dumb question. <laughs> but that's, <laughs> it sounded like a dumb question or a dumb answer? No, like a dumb question because you gave such a, like, simple answer. <laughs> I should have been more complex about that. <laughs> but uh, because I think about the different people who seem to be examples of of Christianity, and they live like Jesus. They're just uh, speaking the truth, not prideful. They're humble. They are um, living it. They don't answer as you would expect. They're right. led by the Spirit of God. They're living what they're preaching. They're not kiss-ups. They're just normal. <laughs> I, hold on, give me one second. Okay. Hey, Taco! Sorry, my dog just decided to run away. <laughs> nice. But, um, I, I believe, but this is just me, I don't know about you, but I believe that a lot of women, more than men, will go to hell. You think so? What do you think about that? Uh, you might be right. I don't know. I, I, I think that women these days have, like, they're just refusing the Bible. They're a lot more close to the Bible because they find it my, misogynist. Yeah, right. And they try to stay away from it. And I, I believe this has to do with, with the government, right? Like, trying to make you believe that the women can be, I'm not saying that we can't be independent, but like trying to put it in a way that we're miserable having a husband. Or... Can you hear me? <laughs> Taco. Sorry, she got lost for a minute. What's her name? Uh, or her his... name is Taco. Taco? <laughs> nice. <laughs> She's a stray dog. She's like, she looks like um, the sheep dog, the German sheep. I don't know how you call them in English. German Shepherd? No, I wish. Oh, okay. A sheep <laughs> dog. A sheep herder. Okay. Yeah, cool. those. 
Yeah, she's adorable. But anyways, I think you like might now, be. I think that it would be like ninety nine point nine 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 percent of m- men go to H E double toothpicks, and ninety nine point nine 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 percent of women will go to H E double toothpicks. <laughs> you might be right. I don't know. Yeah. No. Uh, I, mean, I feel I. A lot of women are always like against my belief on fact of like submitting to their husbands and. Just be a submissive woman. There is really nothing wrong with being submissive, but now these days they see it as oh, submissive. That's abuse. It's not like right. if we think about it, men are more logical than us women. They are not as emotional, you know. And we're supposed to be a team, one flesh, like the Bible says, right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I don't even know why we got into this topic, but just wanted to throw that out there. I guess <laughs> it might be. I. It's not really our business who who goes where or how many or what the numbers are, you know? We we're, we're to work out our own salvation. Right. But I also believe that God gave us this analytic brain, right, for us to also be able to You do no, you definitely do notice the differences in how men and women are yeah. regarding yeah. religion, even though women are more into this religion identity than men, especially nowadays, uh, per capita. But, yeah, it is it is kind of interesting. Yeah. Well, Hank, it was so nice to say hi to you. Yeah, thanks for calling, Floor. Yeah, I'll listen. I'll listen, okay? All right, sounds good. Take care. All right, see ya. Bye. Right on. So many likable callers on Hake, says a man. Indeed. Joelle Friday TV is coming up next, guys. Amazing Asia. Speaking of likable listeners and callers, <laughs> bought a coffee. July just feels anti Semitic. L O L. July? Triple question mark. Hmm. Emoji. <laughs> Says Amazing Asia. Amazing Asia, I disavow for the sake of my channel. They never lie. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Of course. Let God be true and every man a liar, including those people. <laughs> uh, right on, Amazing Asia. Thank you for the coffee. That's cool. Let me double check on any else, any elsewhere. Okay, I have about five minutes till I have to go five minutes till the... Ten minutes to go, right? Until Joelle Friday TV comes up, guys. Catch him. Catch Nick the American Anchor Baby. There was something that I wanted to get to in here. Speaking of the ladies, last week I mentioned this Israel Gaza, Gaza. I liked how that guy over in Michigan said Gaza. Sounds cool. Hillel Fold posted this on X, and I mentioned it last week, and you heard this clip on the Jesse Lee Peterson show as well. I guess that was, that's Coleman Hughes, former JLP guest. He's black. Um, and Coleman Hughes gives context. I think he, he was a guest on my competitor, Joe Rogan. Context about this 32,000, probably end growing, right? Who knows how many. But the Hamas health ministry, I guess, said 32,000 at one recent number of people have been killed in this Israel offensive on on Gaza. Gaza. Because Rogan was like, Joe Rogan, my competitor, 32,000 dead. That's got to feel be some sort of genocide, Jay. And so this gal... In the replies. And he says, well, actually, 13,000 Hamas militants. Israel says they got 13,000 Hamas militants offed, meaning killed. And so 13,000, that leaves 19,000. That's not a bad ratio, actually. Even though it's way more civilians, like, always get killed, I guess, is what he's saying. Especially when Gaza, I mean, the Hamas embeds themselves amongst the civilians according to the claims. 
And so 19,000 civilians for uh, 13,000 Hamas fighters. Not bad. It's better than what America did in some other Middle East thing. America had more civilians per militants killed in some other offensive in the Middle East. And then so this, this woman, so I made that point before, and I'm like, oh, huh, interesting, huh? Had you heard that? Had you considered that? And who cares about it? <laughs> well, I say who cares. But nobody really cares. All these people caught up in cider, cider Jene, NSIJ. J. Let the let the people have their little NSIJ. J. Everybody cider for all, you know, cider for all. I'm not for it. I wouldn't want to get illed K. Nobody wants to get illed K. But that's so, their business over there. I think part of the world's problems is meddling mamas, people meddling. And I get that America's support in it, the American establishment, which are in many slash all instances anti-American. So I'm not for them. But whatever. But this woman, what, what I found interesting was this is a bunch of women replying. So Kristen... Megan, don't harass her, guys. Said, that's still too many murdered, and America has a huge hand in it. Well, America does have a big hand in it because America's subsidizing it in part, right? Cover my pits. And, uh, murdered, and woman yapping. A woman yapping is not help. <laughs> my take. This Christian woman. And so the replies. You see, you see the replies there, Hassan? Okay, so some, she says there's too many murdered. And so this Melissa woman, another woman, purportedly, replies on X. You aren't living in reality. All the deaths are on Hamas. All of them? They could end this today. And I don't agree with Melissa entirely on this. That's kind of like the people who say, this is entirely on uh, Israel. Or this is entirely on Hamas. No, they're both. <laughs> takes two to tango. And you don't blame all the steps. All the steps are not necessarily wrong. Maybe some of them are. Maybe all of them are. All the deaths are on Hamas, she says. They could end this today. Surrender and release the hostages. Stop pretending evil doesn't exist. This is Melissa. Kristen says, oh, sorry, sorry if there's cussing. Hopefully there's no cussing in this. Who do you think created and funded Hamas? Who funded those same people who were created Hamas? The U.S. government. Learn history. Hashtag military industrial complex. Have you spent time in the U.S. military? An irrelevant question. I have, says Kristen. Irrelevant question. Have you spent time in the U.S. military? So this other woman, a third woman, Morganism, said, You're right when you say our country is partly to blame for the October 7th attack. Why we continue to fund a terrorist group, Hamas, she's calling that. I'm a terrorist, is beyond crazy to me. If we could stop funding Hamas and let Israel finish it quick, they'd be, that'd be nice. And then this woman says, Israel created Hamas. So all these women arguing. I almost got into the replies, but I'm like, wait. These are a bunch of women. Let me not feed this. So I didn't reply. But somebody said, but I am covering it. I'm signal boosting <laughs> these ladies. And a woman, another gal replied, another woman, L, said, murder is intentional, you nitwit. Murder is what Hamas did in the early morning, October 7th, when they went unprovoked into innocent people's homes in a concert and slaughtered, blah, 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 blah. I'm zipping my lip. These females. All arguing over something that doesn't even pertain to them. I don't think. Why are they letting you in the military, uh, Kristen? What a mess. Hake scared of women on Twitter. It's not scared, it's just that I don't want to deal with that mess. I gotta end, though, guys. This is, uh, Soul Junk Sunday, going into Monday. 
This is from the 2001 album, 1957, or maybe 2002. Unkst Funk Slag Collision. Adios, America. Joel Friday TV coming up next. Bye. Delivering lies, the post signs, hope for those fake vibes, roll for both hate slows, cause it's a close chase, see like the ghost. Play my ace and invalid. Real appearance is enough to bring the cold chase. Silver, my forearm splinters and broken spanners. I'll manage to spit out what's the damage style that landed. Like Raleigh with the handlebars, but that's your one boss move and it's in no shape. Got the scars, spitting out the overgrown straight follicles. You miss my molecules. I see you back like an atomizer. Beta rays, wasting stars, with tasty face. Innovator glaze over the optical. I swear I'm topping y'all with the tasty cake and frosting. And a thousand mile gauge, your blaze is damaged with diminishing comebacks at minimum wage. Why lie about your age when you're 900 years past your prime? Premium vintage for a scrimmage, march and dime. Parade pass, tubular belt, the new year's a drone blast. I test the little didgeridoos, mission. Mirror the shadow that you don't pass. Get with it. But of course, how easy to cover it all with skin fitted dogs to see through doors. Your songs are boards. Fab cap on the back, come on, the prefab scores. Diddy dumb down to the core. So what you trying to say? My paragraphs all run on straight as I display. When I'm confined in some simple minded catchphrase, there's some bite size alphabets line up in the spoon to spell. A C H O O and blow you all away. A C H O O and blow you all away. A C H O O and blow you all away. A C H O O O O. To our Friday TV coming next. This is Christian. And it's white. Did it come down to the core? So what you try to say? My paragraphs all run on straight as I display. When I'm confined in some simple minded catchphrase, there's some bite size alphabets line up in the spoon to spell. A C H O O and blow you all away. A C H O O and blow you all away. A C H O O and blow you all away. A C H O O O O. Adios, America.